TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen just in case. Don't forget, twitch.com is where you can catch a live if you want to. Username's at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget, we also got Patreon where we post five to ten times a week. The Jurassic Jump. We watch Premier League highlights now. You know what time it is. I'm an expert. The, uh, the link to all of that is down in the description, man. This is Top 8 Durham Dumps. The answer to the UK housing crisis. Okay. This is by Turd Towns, man. Love Turd Towns, man. He just... He gets me. He gets what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Negativity. <laughs> Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism. W intro two. All right, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that brings you the lesser known places in the UK. Yeah, it's been a while. Apparently some people thought I was dead. Uh-uh, whoa, whoa. What are these horses about to do? Bro, sniffing something. Sorry about that. I'm aiming to produce one video a month because I want to be around for my family at this time. Things weren't too great, so I thought what better way to cheer myself up than to head up to County Durham. Yeah, this didn't help. It probably made things worse. County Durham is a county located- No, in all seriously, I hope everything's going okay with your family and I don't know what it is exactly, but I hope everything gets better for you. ...in the northeast of England with a population of 872,000. One positive thing did come from this video. Where is the roof? We can now solve the housing crisis in the UK. I have never seen such a boarded up county. Based on this video, you think this was the most deprived county in the country. And whilst it is true that one in five people here live in extreme poverty, actually the county itself doesn't even crack the top 10 for overall deprivation in England. I think that's gonna surprise you all when you see what's coming up. It seems like most of these places were affected when the mines closed and there were no more jobs. Some of these places make the Welsh Valleys feel like the land of riches. Anyway, just before we get going, if you could all do me a massive favour and like, share and subscribe to help turn. We already subbed up. Let's like. <laughs> yeah, you know, as I always do, I put the video, the, the original video in the comments. Towns thrive. It would be nice to hit 100,000 subscribers to justify sleeping in the back of an old Mazda and living off of Red Bull. That's what you're doing, swear to God. Oh, man. You know what? Y'all need to get that man to 100. I want 100,000 bad, but like... Get that man. Hey, salute, brother. Here are the top eight worst places in County Durham. Number eight, Bishop Auckland. Starting off straight away with a controversial one. Don't worry. But you know, your journey is all going to be worth it, man. Because, you know, if you stay focused and sacrifice what you need to sacrifice for a little while longer, you're closer to success than you are to failure. I just want that to be known. Keep on doing what you're doing, brother. You're close. Sorry, Bish Vegas residents. It Starting off straight away with a controversial one. Don't worry, Bish Vegas residents, it's really only made the list for one reason, and I'm not planning to pick on anything else. It is pretty nice here, and it seems to be one of the only places tourists would visit on this entire list. Very nice architecture, it's the home of art galleries, and money has been spent on the touristy part. Oh, okay. It's popular here due to the castle and the mining museum. I will have a small bit of a nitpick at this modern tower that they've built. It's not even very high, and it's very ugly. Built in 2018, the building somehow reflects the town's mining past. I think it reflects an electric shaver covered in cat hair. Somehow though, that isn't the ugliest building in the town. The biggest and ugliest building is a derelict eight-story tower which dominates the whole place. It doesn't really fit in, does it? 
Plans were revealed to transform this into 54 flats, but unfortunately no changes will be made to the exterior. The new plans have left residents in fear that it's going to turn the town centre into an antisocial hellhole. They obviously haven't seen the crime data, it's already 139 crimes in a thousand residents. If you want to buy a house here, it's an average of 121,000, which I believe is the second most expensive on today's list. Let's get on to the nitty gritty. Why has Bishop Auckland made the list? Because the council are determined to ruin this once incredible town, it leaves me fuming. They have managed to destroy almost the entire shopping centre. Ask anyone from up this way and they'll tell you it used to be good here. Forbond Gate in particular, what an intimidating looking street this is. It looks like the type of place you'd get mugged. I swear it does. I don't trust streets where the, building is this, and the buildings are this close. Almost all the shops here are closed on this one, and with each shop that closes, that's yet another further reason to never walk down here ever again. Next to it, you've got a shopping centre where the main tenant is a charity shop. Great. And then you come onto Newgate Street. Wow, this thing stretches a long way and it looks great too with the church dominating the background. I think it's officially one of the longest shopping streets in the country. Shame you can't do much shopping here because it's all derelict and the street is filled with morons determined to cause trouble. This year it was rated by people from the northeast as the worst for empty shops. I think I counted around 30. Whilst you might think, oh this is happening across the whole country, it's not in all touristy places. This one is completely the council's fault. They've decided to pedestrianise most of it. Then they decided to make people pay to park. Quite rare for this county. Then they drove the final nail into the car. Pay to park? In, the, in Durham? I don't know much about Durham, but it looks like a, like a, just a small town. Like, I feel like... So what he said, is the county getting greedy or something? Often by building an out-of-town shopping centre. There was no need for any of this. It should be a standard bearer for the county. I understand that I started out saying I wouldn't be harsh, and maybe I've been a little bit harsher than I thought. It just angers me to see a place with so much history, beauty, architecture and cultural importance being pissed away. But hey, at least they're getting a new bus station for just the bargain price of 11 million. I can't be the only one that thinks all building projects in this country sound vastly over what they should be. What's the point in it anyway? There won't be any shops to visit soon. Number maybe 7, Shildon. Shildon? I wasn't sure what I'd be walking into with this place. It has the worst crime figures in the entire county with a rate of 182 crimes per thousand people. It was also ranked this year as the fourth most dangerous place in the northeast. I was expecting a war zone and honestly, I didn't really see it. But due to the way previous Tur Towns episodes have run, the place with the worst crime in the county just has to make the list by default. Due to the way the government collects its crime data, it's hard to provide the specific crimes. But I didn't feel unsafe here. It was probably the easiest filming session out of anywhere I went. The town itself isn't- Probably on some shoplifting type stuff. Ugly, <coughs> so I can't even pick on that. They have spent money here, and what they've done is tasteful unlike many places. What I can pick on, however, is that for a town with a population of 9,651, there is not a single supermarket here. That feels pretty mad in this day and age. So how you there isn't food? really any sort of shops to speak of either. After walking the length of the main street, I kept saying to myself, this can't be it. Where's the rest of it? You can keep looking. The best you're going to find is the factory shop. And I'm not even trying to be funny, but who is shopping in the factory shop in 2024? <laughs> I've always thought it was garbage in there. It gets worse because the town's only secondary school was bulldozed in 2022. It's rumoured that their leisure centre is next. So what are, what are you supposed to do in this town for fun? Or, or education? Or food? Shildon used to be an important site of industry, but in 1984, when the main factory was closed, 2,600 people lost their jobs and the town was screwed. Why would anyone want to stay in a town which is clearly dying? Whilst this place is not ugly, you have to look past the licks of paint that the town has had and realise that the problems here have not been addressed and it's gonna get worse. Currently it's just a bit boring and pointless, but it has the potential to become a bigger turd town. Those crime figures are concerning. Number 6. Hartlepool. Hartlepool. Jeff Stelling can breathe a sigh of relief as his beloved Hartlepool is not the worst place in Durham. Hartlepool is the biggest and best known place on today's list with a population of 92,000. It isn't actually a complete write-off here, as there are some things to do and places to see. Some of the town actually looks alright, and other bits, not so much. 
The town has a former football league team nicknamed the Monkey Hangers. Legend has it. I would never go through this. What, that sounds terrible. That sounds. That the name of this town, the name of that football club sounds crazy. The town has a former football league team nicknamed the Monkey Hangers. Legend has it that a French warship was plundered by the locals and the only living being left on the ship was a monkey dressed in French uniform. So they hung the poor bugger. The average intellect amongst Hartlepool residents hasn't improved much since. <laughs> they have done work yeah. to tidy the area up around the headland, but at the same time, other areas have suffered and I found quite a lot of derelict houses which Durham is famous for. Unfortunately, one of the biggest buildings in the town is derelict and it's a massive eyesore. <coughs> it's an interesting old place with new buildings mixed in with the town's industrial past. The smell of the place is quite interesting too. I love industrial towns too, man, because Chicago is one big industrial, low-key industrial port city. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of weird. Man. You know, we got Lake Michigan, which is huge. It's not even a lake. It could damn near be an ocean. <laughs> but it's like... Uh, I like it. I like this industrial vibes. Too. So. It smells like a concoction of raw sewage, salt and a brewery. There is a working brewery right in the town, so that probably explains that one. I'm not sure what happened to the town centre. I couldn't find it no matter how hard I tried. Instead, all I found was one building containing almost all of the town's shops. It's a bit like a new town setup, except this isn't a new town. Anyway, it wasn't terrible inside, a decent oh, range of shops. So if you visit here, your best bet is to nice. stare around the headland. Don't go much further, because the poverty of this town will become much clearer. Despite the poverty, it's the most expensive place to buy a house on the list at 145000 Probably due to being close to the jobs. The it seems high considering how many derelict properties there are here. This year, Hartlepool had... The price of the houses in this town is, is like, given a lot of audacity. The audacity... <laughs> some horrible data released. It was found that the town was the third worst in the entire country for stalking and harassment, and the fifth worst in England for violence. Mm. It was also ranked as the third most dangerous major town in the United Kingdom for overall crime. It was for this reason that I decided to feature Hartlepool over the nearby Stockton Tees. I know some of you are going to ask about that. It isn't great reading, and whilst I didn't experience any of that during my visit, the majority of the place was such a dump that I couldn't wait to leave. <laughs> Hartlepool residents are a bunch of boozed up animal abusers, but if this is all you can afford, beggars can't be choosers. Number 5. Easington Colliery The area is perhaps best known because many scenes from the film Billy Elliot were filmed here. I can't imagine the residents of Easington Colliery have much to dance about nowadays. It's Population 4,647. Everybody knows literally everybody in this town. Pretty bleak here. In 1951, a mining explosion caused the loss of life for 83 men. The mine was closed uh, down in the 90s and the place hasn't managed to move on. Locals have recently been complaining to the media that they're sick of the smackheads from London being dumped in their hometown. It was already a pretty poor place to live, but now nobody knows their neighbour and the community spirit has vanished. As it turns out, there's three very boarded up places on today's list. And Jesus. This all looks... I don't know why... This all looks like council housing. Interestingly, they've all taken a different approach on how to deal I with their vacant wrong, properties. But... I think that Easington has probably done this the best way. Loads of empty houses, but most of them are being kept clean, free from vandalism and the need for boards. That doesn't mean there isn't some, because there is a lot of empty houses here. But on the whole, it looks 10% better than some places will get onto. They've knocked down a lot of empty houses, even the one which was Billy Elliot's house. But there are still houses remaining here and 4,600 people call this place a home. It's one of those famous places where you can buy a house for just £5,000, but the actual average is 95000 The railway line passes right by it without stopping, yet the government would tell people they don't want you driving. Well, guess what? The people of Easington Coilery can't do either. They're more likely to be found riding an old minecart and dreaming so you just stuck. of reliving the good old days where this place had a purpose. There's nothing easy about living in Easington. Number 4. Peter Lee 
Peter Lee. Unlike almost everyone on this list, the town of Peter Lee is not historic. It's not a mining town, but don't fear, it's still bad because it's one of those incredible new towns. Big? 20,000? The name comes from a prominent miner in the area who probably wouldn't be too happy if he was alive today to be associated with this place. This town has a population of around 23,000. It's basically a grey bunker of smashed up shops with a derelict tower block on either side of the shopping centre and then stacks of unwashed rabbit hutch houses with the odd four storey council block thrown in for good measure. Why even bother making- You know what, it kind of looks like Australia. Australia? Um... Kind of looks like, reminds me of a place where Spanian took us before. King such a small block of flats. So, Peter Lee resembles places such as Basildon and Harlow, except it somehow feels even more pointless. The shops here have been devastated by the out-of-town shopping centre at Dalton Park, so if you move here, you probably won't ever go to the centre of Peter Lee anyway, but you will have to look at it, and that's depressing enough. What is left of the shopping centre is grey, grey, and more grey. It literally looks like the perfect place to relieve yourself. May as well, there's nobody around, and it can't get any dirtier or filthier here. It's got so bad that they've closed off the entire second floor of the shopping centre due to a 0% occupancy rate. Damn. Whilst you can actually pick up a house here for £5,000, which is just madness by the way, the official average price is 102000 Due to all the empty houses, the BBC reported this year that the houses will be divided up and split into one-room dwellings for asylum seekers. People have been buying up these houses cheaply and converting them into HMOs, making a tidy profit. Let me know, do you think this is better than whole street sitting- What the hell, can I do that? Can I get some? Empty. I often wonder where the people who used to live in these towns have gone to. Well, I did get to see some of the people that still lived here, and large scores of working age men were just sat around dossing at the pub glaring at me. They probably weren't used to outsiders, because nobody would ever have a reason to visit Peter Lee. I can't imagine there's many jobs here. As it turns out, a whopping... 9.6% of Peter Lee residents are signed off as long-term sick. 4% is the country average, if you are wondering. The crime here is pretty bad, at 179 crimes per 1,000 residents, which makes it worse than Darlington, Stanley and Stockton Tees. So it's depressing to look at, depressing to live here, and it's so depressing that you'll probably be signed off sick. Avoid this one, it's got nothing going for it. Number 3. Wheatley Hill you know, I, I turn down to whoever behind the tenor. I take whatever he says very seriously. Why would he lie to me? I see it. The I name see. Wheatley Hill is possibly conjuring up some sort of romantic image of the British countryside inside your head. 3,100 people. Dude, I would hate to live here. No offense, I, like, I just don't want to know so many people. Like, I would know everyone. Well, let me correct that for you. This village is. Tr I'm low key an introvert. Like a lot of people don't think I'm an introvert. Like I just be, ha ha, here, kiki. <laughs> I'm really who I am. You know, I can get extroverted if I need to, but like, man, brash and it smells like it too. Much like the majority of this list, it's the home of a former big pit which closed in 1968. Originally, an effort Ooh. was made. To See a basketball court? Y'all be hooping? to transform this village and move on from its mining past. They were even awarded third place in a national competition of surveyors for the changes that were made. But unfortunately, the surveyors got bored halfway through the job and gave up, as nothing has changed since the colliery and some of the mine houses were dragged down. Unlike some of the later entries in this list, the derelict houses here are more of a spattering, although there are a lot of them all over. I was really starting to get annoyed at this point at seeing so many boarded up buildings in this county. The sight of yet another metal barrier filled me with sadness. Even when they try to build something new, they give up halfway through. The locals show their discontent by throwing bricks through the windows of these houses. The most modern building in the entire village was a barber shop. The technology and bright lights inside here must have really shocked weekly locals, who won't have seen anything quite like this before. Actually, I'm quite shocked how quickly this shop was repaired after a car was ram raided into it during the August riots of this year. How was it repaired so quickly in just one week? The poor locals were like cavemen discovering fire. They just wanted to come inside your shop to see what all the lights were. The biggest tourist attraction is a field with two miserable horses which make the whole place stink. The biggest building in the village is abandoned. It looks like a giant red blot, like when you have hemorrhoids. 
The place feels eerie and abandoned, but yet still 3,100 people call this place a home. It's known for being incredibly unwelcoming to outsiders, and it's a kind of lawless place where the lunatics run the asylum. There isn't even a damn pub here, so the locals can't drown their sorrows. You may be tempted by the cheap average house price of 84000 but trust me, don't do it. You'll get stuck here forever because no one else in their right mind would ever want to buy your house after you're done with it. It feels like they're slowly trying to move Wheatley Hill up the hill as there's some better bits on the top. Once you're there, you can look down at all the turd washing around below, but at the end of the day, you'll still be living in Wheatley Hill, just like them, and one day you'll <laughs> drop into the bowl where you all belong. I'm hungry. Number two, Borden. That made me hungry. Some of you may be familiar with this place, as others have discovered this place recently, and it's truly incredible method of dealing with empty properties. It's a village with a population of 6,800 and it's sandwiched between Peterlee so and the close, sea. Everything. Actually, being by the sea is probably one of the few things that has going for it. There isn't much to speak of in the village, it's mostly just a rundown mess. That wouldn't make it particularly special on this list. Oh no, it's made the list because half the village's houses are empty because nobody in their right minds would ever want to live here. What they've done though is genius. What? To pretend that the houses aren't derelict. Oh, this is one of the ones where they painted the windows and doors? Painted them with new windows and doors. It's fantastic. I've never seen this done anywhere else. They, they do it in uh, Ireland a lot, I've seen. There's whole streets like this, and they can't give these houses away. Apparently, there's a whopping 350 empty houses in this village. It seems like the asking price of 5000 is still too much. The overall average price is 68000 in this village. I asked a local resident what was going on with the place and he blamed a large number of smackheads who'd been shipped in from London. It's difficult, isn't it? These people have to live somewhere and there's not many places where so much cheap housing is available. But it sure does destroy any sense of community which used to be here. Local yobs smash and burn down the houses through boredom and drug fueled rages caused by having to live in Horden. Admittedly, I do like the church here in the middle of the village, although it looks massively out of place in a hellhole like this. Far too grand. That a Range Rover? Borden is of course the site in a hellhole like this. Far too grand. That's a Range Rover. Somebody got their priorities mixed up out here. Borden is of course the site of a former mine, which is one of the largest in the country employing 4,000 people at the height of its powers. That shut its doors in the 80s and not much has really happened since then. Horton did get a new train station in 2020, which is literally the only positive I can find. Avoid this one like the plague. You won't even be able to find work unless you're good at painting doors. And if so, you'll be the busiest person in the town. And number one is Eldon Lane. Eldon Lane. What a place this is, by the way. Clear all that. You know, I feel like I'm very blessed watching stuff like this. Like, people be out of work and I hope some everybody gets employed and gets what they want. But like, having a job such as this... Where I could just pick up and work remotely from anywhere. It's a it's a true blessing. And I got to forget not to take it for granted. Like, I worked for it. I worked hard. But, like, people say I don't. But whatever you say. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying? I put in the hours. So, it's like. I got to not take it for granted. That gunk out your eyes. This place is going to shock you. There's honestly nothing online about this place. But that shouldn't really surprise you. Population 998? Because this place barely has sewers, so I shouldn't expect the internet. But a place that is this bad, and I mean it truly is shocking here. Literally I can't believe the lack knows. of information that's available online. This place has to be seen to be believed. A bit like when you look back after visiting the loo. This felt like I was looking back at photos from a Victorian slum in the 1890s. I know the country is pretty much screwed at this point, but I've never mm. seen anywhere this bad. A lot has been said about Horden on the internet, but my god, this place was worse. At least Horden is by the sea. No, a lot. I hear a lot of overpopulation stuff. And everything, all eight little places he named, towns, pretty empty. Pretty boarded up. Plenty of housing. Hey, this place is in the middle of nowhere. It's the most dreary, depressing hellhole I've ever visited. At least Horden paints their empty houses and puts fake doors on them. Here they have no pride and can't be bothered. Everything is smashed up and boarded up. Then the boards are ripped down and smashed up again. It's a vile mess and there's no hiding it. I thought I was on the set of a Charles Dickens film. 
All it's missing is some mist and fog. It already has the peculiar characters hanging on the corners of a cigarette dribbling out the corner of their mouths. Everywhere you look, there's houses that should have been demolished 50 years ago. Streets filled with bodily fluids that are thrown from the wretched residents' windows and so many crumbling houses. I don't normally like to talk politics, but somebody please call Keir Starmer's mama. I've just solved the housing crisis. Just like Horden, they were selling houses here for just £5,000. If this video does well enough, I could almost afford my dream of time travelling back to a simple time in Eldon. The average is a bit more though, at 65000 Why build on green spaces when there's a perfectly good place here which could be right. flattened and then rebuilt? All I know is, there was a colliery here which employed a thousand people, but it closed ages ago in 1932. So it begs the question, what is the excuse for this place? In the year 2000, a survey took place which found that 76% of the 390 homes were unfit to live in. That is shocking. This led to several streets being demolished, but nothing was built in their place. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes that a place like this exists in England. A lot of places may have one boarded up row of houses, but this was almost every other house. And just, yeah, they down bad out just because a house isn't boarded up, it doesn't mean it's not empty. I've only seen one place like this before and it was Penrice in Wales. This place is an embarrassment to the good people of the North East. I guarantee the fat cats in London don't even know it exists. It's sad that a place like this is in the country of so many empty houses. It's sad that some people still have to live here amongst all the smashed glass and dirt. There's less than a thousand people that call this place home and you truly have to wonder, what's keeping them here? Elden Lane probably. is truly the biggest turd town in County Durham. Everywhere else I could at least grasp at some vague positivity, but here there's nothing. No pub, and I'm not even sure if the shop here is even open any longer. The nearby villages in this community were also bad. The whole place had a dreary, pointless existence. It makes me so mad, the politicians should be sent to Elden Lane to think about their actions. And that's it, the eight biggest turd towns in County Durham. Not gonna lie, them, them, now these might be the turdiest of turds. I don't want to offend nobody, but the whoever's in charge of them, this, they bogus.